Islamic eschatology is the branch of Islamic scholarship that studies your Malki Yama or your Madin. This is believed to be the final assessment of humanity by Allah, consisting of the annihilation of all life, resurrection and judgment. The time of the event is not specified, although there are major and minor signs which have been foretold to happen with Qiyama at the end of time. Many verses of Quranic Surah contain the motif of the impending day of resurrection. The 75th Surah of the Quran, Al-Qiyama, has as its main subject the resurrection. Its tribulation is also described in the hadith and commentaries of Islamic expositors such as Al-Ghazali, Ibn Qatir, Ibn Majah, Al-Bukhari, and Ibn Khuzayma. The Day of Judgment is also known as the Day of Reckoning, the Last Day in al sar or the Hour. The Hadith describe the end time with more specificity than the Quran, describing the events of Al-Qiyama through twelve major signs. At the time of judgment, terrible corruption and chaos will rule. The Mahdi will be sent and with the help of Isa, will battle Marsi ad Dajjal. They will triumph, liberating Islam from cruelty, and this will be followed by a time of serenity with people living true to religious values. However, there is no mention of the advent of Mahdi and Isa in one era in any of the Hadith. Some Muslim scholars translate the Arabic word Imam as Mahdi to prove the advent of Mahdi and Isa in a single era. Like other Abrahamic religions, Islam also teaches resurrection of the dead, a final tribulation and eternal division of the righteous and wicked. Islamic apocalyptic literature describing Armageddon is often known as Fitna, Malahim, or Gahabar in Shia Islam. The righteous are rewarded with pleasures of Jannah, while the unrighteous are tortured in Jahannam. Six Articles of Faith The Day of Judgment or Resurrection, Al-Qiyama, is one of the six articles of faith in Islam. The tribulation associated with it is described in the Quran and Hadith and commentaries of Islamic expositors like Al-Ghazali, Ibn Qatir, Ibn Majah, Al-Bukhari, and Ibn Khuzayma. The Day of Judgment is also known as the Day of Reckoning, the Hour, and the Last Day. The Day of Judgment or Resurrection, Al-Qiyama, relates to one of the six Akidah in Sunni Islam, and seven Akidah in Shia belief. Three Periods There are three periods before the Day of Judgment, also known as Ashra to Sar or Alamachu Kiyami Sar, with some debate as to whether the periods could overlap, major and minor signs. There are a number of major and minor signs of the end of days in Islam. There is debate over whether they could occur concurrently or must be at different points in time. Although Islamic scholars typically divide them into three major periods, minor signs the appearance of fitna and removal of kashu. Coming of 30 Dajjals, everyone presuming himself that he is an apostle of Allah, until a person would pass by a grave of another person and he would say, I wish it had been my abode. Loss of honesty and authority is given to those who do not deserve it. The taking away of knowledge and the prevalence of religious ignorance. Frequent occurrences of sudden and unexpected death. Spreading of killing. Acceleration of time. Rejection of sunnah. The spread of reba. The spread of zina. Drinking of alcohol. The widespread and condoning of music. The decoration of mosques is a matter of pride and competition. Women will increase in number and men will decrease in number so much so that 50 women will be looked after by one man. Abundance of earthquakes. Frequent occurrences of disgrace, distortion, and defamation. When people wish to die because of the severe trials and tribulations that they are suffering. Jews fighting Muslims. When paying charity becomes a burden, nomads will compete in the construction of very tall buildings, women appearing naked despite their being dressed, seeking knowledge from misguided Nestre scholars. The liar is believed, the truthful is called a liar and the honest is called a traitor. The death of righteous knowledgeable people. The emergence of indecency, enmity among relatives and neighbors. The rise of idolatry and polytheists in the community. 
the Euphrates will uncover a mountain of gold. Estrangement of Islam, when the land of the Arabs returns to being a land of rivers and fields, the Romans would form a majority amongst people. Earning of money through unlawful ways increases, when there is much rain but little vegetation. Evil people will be expelled from Al-Medina. Wild animals communicate with humans, and a man speaks to his whip or his shoe, and his thigh will tell him about what happened to his family after he left. Increase in thunderbolts. There will be a special greeting for the people of distinction. Trade will become so widespread that a woman will help her husband in business. No truly honest man will remain and no one will be trusted. Only the worst people will be left. They will not know any good or forbid any evil. Nations will call each other to destroy Islam by any and every means. Quran and Islamic knowledge will be passed on, but no one will follow it correctly. Muslim rulers will come who do not follow the guidance and tradition of the Sunnah. Some of their men will have the hearts of devils in a human body. Stinginess will appear, honorable people will perish and dishonorable people would prevail. A man obeys his wife and disobeys his mother, and treats his friend kindly whilst shunning his father. Voices are raised in the mosques. The leader of a people is the worst of them. People treat a man with respect because they fear some evil he may do. Much wine is drunk. Also Ibn Umar reported, the messenger of Allah turned to us and said, O oh emigrants, there are five things with which ye will be tested, and I seek refuge with Allah lest ye live to see them. Sexual immorality never appears among people to such an extent that they commit it openly except that they will be afflicted by plagues and diseases, unknown to their forefathers. They do not cheat in weights and measures except that they will be stricken with famine, calamity, and the oppression of rulers. They do not withhold charity from their wealth except that rain will be withheld from the sky, and were it not for the animals there would be no rain at all. They do not break their covenant with Allah and his messenger except that Allah will enable their enemies to overpower them and take some of what is in their hands. And unless their leaders rule according to the book of Allah and seek every good from that which Allah has revealed, then Allah will cause them to fight one another. The link between the minor and the major signs appearance of the Mahdi. Major signs following the second period, the third will be marked by the ten major signs known as Allah Martus Sar al kubra They are as follows. The false messiah, Masi Abdajal, shall appear with huge powers as a one-eyed man with the other eye blind and deformed like a grape. He will claim to be God and to hold keys to heaven and hell and lead many astray, although believers will not be deceived. His heaven is the believer's hell, and his hell is the believer's heaven. The Dajjal would be followed by 70,000 Jews of Isfahan wearing Persian shawls. The return of Isa, from the second sky to kill Dajjal, Yajoj and Marjoj, two tribes of vicious beings which had been imprisoned by Dual Kamine will break out. They will ravage the earth, drink all the water of Lake Tiberias, and kill all believers in their way. Isa, Imam al-Mahdi, and the believers with them will go to the top of a mountain and pray for the destruction of Gog and Magog. Allah will eventually send disease and worms to wipe them out. A huge black smoke cloud will cover the earth. Dabit Halad, or the beast that will come out of the ground to talk to people. The sun will rise from the west. Three sinking of the earth, one in the east, one in the west, and one in Arabia. The second trumpet blow will be sounded. The dead will return to life and a fire will start come out of Yemen that shall gather all to Mashar al Kiyama. Other signs Muslims shall fight against a nation wearing shoes made of hair and faces like hammered shields, with red complexion and small eyes. The emergence of the Sulyani within the Syria region. The truce and joint Christian Muslim campaign against a common enemy, followed by Al Mulhama al Kubra, a non Muslim versus. Muslim war, black standard will come from Khorasan, nothing shall turn him back until they are planted in Jerusalem, Mecca will be attacked and the Kaaba will be destroyed, a pleasant breeze will blow from the south that shall cause all believers to die peacefully, Quran will be forgotten and no one will recall its verses.
All Islamic knowledge will be lost to the extent where people will not say, La ilaha illa Allah, but instead old people will babble without understanding, Allah, Allah. People will fornicate in the streets, like donkeys. The first trumpet blow will be sounded by Israfil, and all that is in heavens and earth will be stunned and die except what God wills. Silence envelops everything for forty, and there will be disagreement concerning succession. Then a man will emerge out of Medina, he will hurry to Mecca, and the people of Mecca will come out to him and urge him and try to force him to accept the BAIAA. Major figures. Mahdi Mahdi translates to, guided one, with hadith being the primary source of his descriptions. His appearance will be the first sign of the third period. Hadith write that he will be a descendant of Muhammad through his daughter Fatima and cousin Ali. The Mahdi will be looked upon to kill al-Dajjal and end the prevalent disintegration of the Muslim community to prepare for the reign of Jesus who will rule for a time after. The Mahdi will similarly kill all enemies of the Prophet and fulfill the prophetic mission as a vision of justice and peace before following Jesus' a rule. The physical features of Mahdi are described in the Hadith. He will be of Arab complexion and average height with a large belly large eyes and a sharp nose. He will have a mole on his cheek, the sign of the Prophet on his shoulder, and be recognized by the Caliphate while he sits at his own home. As written by Abu Dawood, al-Mahdi will have a broad forehead and a pointed nose. He will fill the earth with justice as it is filled with injustice and tyranny. He will rule for seven years. Abu Dawood, Sahih, 2.208 and Fujal al Mahima, 275 Though the duration of his rule differs, Hadith are consistent in describing that Allah will perfect him in a single night with inspiration and wisdom, and his name will be announced from the sky. He will bring back worship of true Islamic values, and bring the Ark of the Covenant to light. He will conquer Istanbul and Mount Dalem and will eye Jerusalem and the Dome as his home. His banner will be that of the Prophet Muhammad, black and unstitched, with a halo. Unopened since the death of Muhammad, the banner will unfurl when the Mahdi appears. He will be helped by angels and others that will prepare the way for him. He will understand the secrets of Abjad. Sunni and Shiite perspectives on the Mahdi Sunni and Shiite Islam have different beliefs on the identity of Mahdi. Historically, Sunni Islam has derived religious authority from the Caliphate, who was in turn appointed by the companions of Muhammad at his death. The Sunnis view the Mahdi as the successor of Muhammad. The Mahdi is expected to arrive to rule the world and re-establish righteousness. Various Sunnis also share a parallel belief that though there may be no actual Mahdi, the existence of Mujadid will instead lead the Islamic revolution of a renewal in faith and avoidance of deviation from God's path. Such an intellectual and spiritual figure of Sunni tradition has been attributed to numerous Muslims at the end of each Muslim century from the origin of Islam to the present day. This classical interpretation is favored by Sunni scholars like Ghazali and Ibn Taymiyyah. Shia Islam, in distinction, followed the bloodline of Muhammad, favoring his cousin and son by marriage, Ali. Ali was appointed the first imam, and following him there were eleven more. Muhammad al-Mahdi, otherwise known as the twelfth imam, went into hiding in AD 873 at the age of four. His father was al quote Askari, and had been murdered, and so he was hidden from the authorities of the Abbasid Caliphate. He maintained contact with his followers until AD 940, when he was hidden. Twelve Vershi Islam believes that al-Mahdi is the current imam, and will emerge at the end of the current age. Some scholars say that, although unnoticed by others present, the Mahdi of 12 Ursia Islam continues to make an annual pilgrimage while he resides outside of Mecca. In distinction, Sunni Islam foresees him as a separate and new person. The present Ayatollahs of Iran see themselves as joint caretakers of the office of the Imam until he returns. They anticipated the Mahdi who will lead the rising people of the Yemen back to their country in order to restore the glory of their lost.
Himyarite kingdom. It was believed that he would eventually conquer Constantinople, claimants of the Mahdi throughout history. There have been multiple claimants to the role of Mahdi that had come into existence through their pious deeds and by subsequently acquiring their own following. One of these men, Muhammad al-Hanifiyah was said to have judgment and character over rival caliphs, and mysteries of his death arose in the 8th century. It was believed he had in fact not died and would one day return as the Mahdi. The sect of Mardavis arose as followers of another claimant, Muhammad Mahdi of Janpur in the 15th century. Furthermore, a potential Mahdi, Muhammad Ahmad of Sudan, was believed to hold the title following his self-proclamation in 1881 and stand against the Turco-Egyptian government as well as the British. Additionally, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Punjab claimed to be the Mahdi during the same period as Muhammad Ahmad and considered a heretic by Orthodox Muslims. Though he amassed a substantial following of 10 to 20 million and is credited with founding the sect of Ahmadiyya today, this sect is established in over 200 countries and territories of the world. It should not be forgotten that two linked Shia movements, that of the Babis and that of the Baha'is, believe that their prophets, Sayyid Ali Muhammad, the Bab, and Mirza Hussain, Ali Nuri, Baha'u'llah were fulfillers of prophecy. The Bab is thought to be the return of the 12th Imam and Baha'u'llah the Mahdi. Since the Baha'is now preach a fairly successful international religion with possibly 6 million followers, the concept of a fulfillment of Islamic prophecy is now currently well outside the Islamic world. Isa Isa is the Arabic name for Jesus, and his return is considered the third major sign of last days while the second is the appearance of Masi ad-Dajjal. Although Muhammad is the preeminent prophet in Islam, Jesus is the only prophet who is said not to have died but rather raised up by Allah other than Idris mentioned in the Quran. Thus, in accordance with post-Quranic hadiths, he will conceivably return to earth as a just judge before the Day of Judgment. As written in Hadith, Abu Huraira narrates that the Messenger of Allah said, By him in whose hands my soul rests, it is definitely close in that time that Isa, son of Mayim, descends amongst you as a just ruler. He will break the cross, kill the swine and abolish Jazia, and money will abound in such excess that no one will accept it. Ahmad bin Hanbal, Al-Musnad, Volume 2 240 hadith reference both the Mahdi and Isa simultaneously and the return of the Mahdi will coincide with the return of Isa. He will descend from the heavens in al quds at dawn. The two will meet, and Mahdi will lead the people in Fajr prayer. After the prayer, they will open a gate to the west and encounter Marsi ad-Dajjal. After the defeat of ad-Dajjal, Isa will lead a peaceful 40-year reign until his death. He will be buried in a tomb beside Muhammad in Medina. Though the two most certainly differ regarding their role and persona in Islamic eschatology, the figures of the Mahdi and Isa are ultimately inseparable for according to the Prophet. Though Isa is said to descend upon the world once again, the Mahdi will already be present. What will be your reaction when the son of Mary descends and your Imam is from among yourselves? Al-Dajjal Al-Dajjal or the Antichrist or False Messiah does not appear in the Quran but is a prominent figure in their Hadiths and Islamic eschatology. As a whole, he appears gruesome and is blind in his right eye. His one eye is thought to be a symbol that correlates with how single-minded he is in achieving his goal of converting Muslims to his side. Al-Dajjal has the intention of gaining followers through his miracle-working abilities and apparent wealth and generosity. These abilities are a test for true believers of Islam, who have been warned about his power and must resist his material temptations. He is thought to appear prior to the Day of Judgment, where he will engage in an epic battle with and be killed by either Jesus or the Mahdi. Al-Dajjal functions symbolically as a key cog in overall Islamic eschatological picture, which emphasizes the world coming to an end, of good finally triumphing over evil, and of the remarkable events that will prefigure the replacement of the mortal world with a more authentic form of existence in the afterlife. 
Various Muslim political movements use the concept of al-Dajjal to comment on contemporary events, and often identify him with opposing regimes or other worldly forces that they consider as harmful to Islam. Yajuj and Majuj The fourth major sign of end time will be that the wall which imprisons the nations of Yajuj and Majuj will break, and they will surge forth. Some Islamic scholars, such as Imran Nazahosan, believe the wall began to crack during the life of Muhammad. This is supported in the Hadith where the Prophet mentions that, a hole has been made in the wall containing the Yajuj and Majuj, indicating the size of the hole with his thumb and index finger. Their release will occur 40 years prior to the Last Judgment. But when Yajoj and Marjoj let loose and they rush headlong down every hill and mountain, Quran 21-96 they will ravage the earth. Ultimately, Allah will send worms and insects to destroy them.